He is the defending WKA North American Super Light Heavyweight Champion. Welcome, Evil Ian Jackman. Here's your referee in charge in this bout, Marcos Rosales, now to give instructions. Gentlemen, I've already gone over the rules with you in the dressing room. Is there any questions? Jacqueline gifted with exceptional athletic ability, but there was a time back in junior high school when he didn't have any confidence in himself. Well, that, those days are long ago. I, I started fighting when I was really young, and it wasn't because I was a bully or a bad guy. I just liked fighting, and I didn't care whether I won or I lost or it was a tie. I just I liked fighting. It was, it was more fun than football. Or hockey. I mean, it was just, it was the most intense experience. And then a school teacher took me aside and said that, um, you know, if I continued down that path, I'd probably end up dead or in jail. And he really scared me. The trouble is, I became a pussy after that. I started letting people push me around, smack me around. I would never fight. The thing that really switched it in my head was one of my buddies got beat up in front of me. It's different when I was getting beat up, I could take it. But when I saw one of my buddies get beat up, that upset me. So I got my mom to put me in karate at 14 and by 16 I was fighting pro and by 18 I was the Canadian champ. It was kind of hard for me to fight at first. You've got thousands of people watching. You've got some guy you don't even know you got to beat the hell out of and he's trying to kill you. So it, there were the first few fights there was a battle going on in here because I didn't want to hurt him but I didn't want to get hurt and it, I'll never forget we were fighting in Windsor and uh, this guy he was beating me and it was scary because he was, he was hurting me. And finally, something clicked in my brain. I said, either get in or get out. You know, you can't, none of this halfway stuff. And I snapped, something snapped inside me. And I, I threw a roundhouse kick and I broke the guy's arm and I went in and knocked him out with the hands. And from then on, I just, I knew, you know, if you're gonna be a fighter, you gotta be a fighter. You can't have any fear. Ian is a colorful character, not by any, but not by dint of, of trying to be that way or, or uh, uh, consciously setting himself up as a, uh, as a larger-than-life character. He sees himself as a warrior. Uh, this is important for boxers, for fighters, kickboxers, boxers, whatever you want to name. He sees himself. Uh, that, that's, that's his persona. When I was fighting, all of us guys, we all had to work full-time jobs, 40 hours a week. I was in construction, so you're getting up 6, 7 in the morning, going do dirty, filthy, heavy lifting construction all day long. I come home, have a quick meal, and my gym was an hour away, the only place I could get sparring. So many, thank God for gravel on the side of the road, because that would wake me up. I'd literally fall asleep, and all of a sudden, whoa! Get there, train for two, three hours, come home, go to bed, bang, do it all again the next day. And I used to think, man, if I could just train and not have to work, imagine how much better of a fighter you could be. And that's what the guys can do today. I missed it by one generation, one generation. He was gonna pull away, spun, and hit him with the spinning back fist. My main goal, aside from wanting to fight for a championship someday, was to promote the sport because it always upset me that boxing was so huge. These guys are getting, you know, that was back in the Tyson days, you know, and $10 million, $15 million paydays. Granted, it's just the top 1% of the boxers that make that kind of money, but even regular boxers, they were still making thousands of dollars per round where we were making maybe a hundred. And it was very tough in Canada where I was from because the government uh, had a moratorium on it because Duck Koo Kim was killed in the ring by Ray Boom Boom Mancini. This is boxing. Now, it was too big of a sport to, to do anything to, but kickboxing was in its infancy. It was just starting out, and so they banned kickboxing. I was so upset about that. I would call the press. I was, I get, it looked like I was trying to toot my own horn a lot of times, but I really wasn't. I just wanted respect for my sport. Sean Tompkins, God rest his soul, contacted me and, and told me, hey, I was that little guy running around in your gym back in the day when you were a champion. And I want you to know that it was guys like you that paved the way for guys like me, so thank you. So that was cool. And so, and if I had just one little iota of, of them being able to do that today from, from the battles I fought when I was fighting outside the ring, you know, that, that makes me proud. Yeah! 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 Oh, the series of punches, I don't know, like,
I think it was the, the right hand that did the damage to initiate it, and another right hand sent it with the canvas, Phil. Ten seconds left. Oh, a oh, left hand, and Clagan is down again. Sidekick to the head. I knew eventually I would have to go to the States in order to compete competitively. So I just, I kept training and I got a, a big break. I got to go and fight at New, in New York City at Madison Square Garden Felt Forum where I fought John Kenny and uh, he was the hometown favorite. I think half of Brooklyn was there to support him. But I, I really, I trounced him. It was a really good fight for me. I beat the hell out of him. <laughs> but the guy hated me after that too, I heard. <laughs> Because half of Brooklyn's there to see this guy fight. Some kid from Canada comes in and whoops his ass. You know, and I'm thinking, finally, okay, now I'm going to have my big chance. Somebody's going to want me, and I can get out of Canada. Not that I wanted to. I love Canada. But there's, you just can't compete in professional sports there, not to, other than hockey, maybe. I got a shot to fight for the North American Championship, which I did, and I won. So, again, I'm kind of slowly but surely building my way up. Then something even better happened. Lennox Lewis came in. He won the gold medal in the 88 Olympics. And his first fight he wanted to be in his hometown, which is basically Toronto, Ontario. He's not from England like everybody thinks. He's from Canada. You know, I got to spar with him and the guys, and, and they saw for, for a kickboxer. I was, I was a good boxer, too. And I heard that California was kind of big time for kickboxing, too. So basically, with three days' notice, I quit my job, said goodbye to my family and friends, my girlfriend. Boom, I was on the on the road, motorcycle, tent, sleeping bag, going to California. Because I knew Van Damme wow. was down there doing all these martial art movies, got that going again, and I knew that's where the kickboxing was big. Benny the Jet Yurkidas had the Jet Center down there. So I went down there and started showing off my stuff at the gym, and people started to take notice, and I got my first fight, and it was against Javier Mendez, who ended up going on to be world champion. I think I was the only guy that ever beat him, because I beat him that first fight. Again, just hit him with everything with the kitchen sink and he went to distance but I won it and so that was my mark in California. Because of that I uh, Don the Dragon Wilson and I became very good friends. We ended up sparring together for that fight. Our sparring sessions were better than a lot of fights. He could club you like no other man. And then Don started putting me in his movies too which is really cool. So at this point, things in my life are great. Early 20s, winning all my fights. I get into the, the movies, you know. I'm just a kid from Canada. I never thought, I, I never believed in myself that much for, for too many things other than fighting. And then the acting came along and I gave it a shot. And this is when things started to go bad for my fighting career because I remember I was on the set of Ring of Fire 2 with the dragon. We were shooting that, I played the bad guy. And I said this to the makeup lady too, I think on the set, I said, I could, this, I'm, I'm supposed to be fighting for the, to defend my North American championship against James Claggett. This is in Hollywood at the Palladium in front of all my friends, it's my birthday. And uh, you need eight weeks to train for a, a championship fight. And I was able to get two in. And I knew I had to knock him out in the first couple rounds or I'd be done. And I almost did, I knocked him down about five times in the first five rounds. Then I ran out of gas, exactly like I knew what would happen because he's a tough old dog. He kept getting up. So I lost the fight. Even though I, I beat the hell out of the first half of the fight, I just ran out of gas and he beat the hell out of me. Still my favorite fight though of all time. It was like a Rocky fight. Everybody was into it, you know. People were going crazy. Girls were crying in the audience. I'm falling out of the ring, pulling through the ropes. But that made me wake up, okay, if I'm going to be a fighter, I'm going to be a fighter. If I'm going to be an actor, I'm going to be an actor. What I do, I get a shot at. The world championship, finally my dream come true, Javier Mendez, guy I already beat the hell out of a few years earlier. He went on to be world champion. That was my dream, fight for the world championship. Get a movie. This time I'm the star, I get expert weapon. So I'm doing this movie and I had four weeks to train for the fight instead of two. But still, it's, it's not what you need. And um, I did okay in a fight, I lost a close decision. Had I been in shape the way I was the first time we met, I know in my heart that I would have won. But it wasn't meant to be, and I ended up, you know, it was, like I said, I was starring in films. There's a lot more money and a lot less pain in, <laughs> in making movies. Looking back in retrospect, I see that everything happens for a reason. And although I cut my kickboxing career short and was told I could have been one of the greatest of all time. I mean, they were always trying to get me to fight Don Wilson, Rob Com, and Rick Rufus. But um, I got into acting and then I got into filmmaking. 
because I thought, what, how can you reach, my main goal is to fix things, right wrongs, fight the good fight. And I had learned through a girlfriend I was dating at the time that cancer was curable if you stayed away from your oncologist. And uh, within six months, she had it out of her system with nutrition, um, Rife machine, and enzymes, supplements, all that stuff. That put me on a path where I am now. I've, I've built a website, and I'm making a doc. I'm an independent filmmaker. I'm making a documentary on alternative cancer healings. I really believe in it. Thank you. <laughs> and um, uh, the website's called iCureCancer.com. I being the person or whoever has the cancer, you know what I mean? You gotta heal yourself. Very hard for you to understand if you've never heard this before, but research it and trust me, I've been doing this 12 years now and I've seen it a million times. Chemo, radiation, and surgery will kill you before the cancer, nine times out of 10. Chemo has a 3% success rate. Point is, I, I always fight, right? That's just what I do for the right, for the good. I did it against the Canadian government when they tried to ban my sport. I did it obviously in the ring. So that's kind of, that's the path I've been on. Went from fighter, actor, and now fighter again, but this time I'm fighting, you know, City Hall.